class, welcome back to our unit on similarity. We are uh, continuing our lesson on ratios and proportions. And uh, we're going to talk about equal ratios and equivalent proportions in this lesson. And I'll save this, the last piece, for a third lesson. So I'm trying to chunk this down because I do talk a lot. I want to make sure that we understand everything at all times. So we already discussed uh, setting up ratios and scale factors. Hopefully, you have watched that uh, video or at least understood that concept before getting into this. Um, and if at any point in time you get confused, do go back and, uh, and check that out. It's so helpful. Anyhow, let's get moving, shall we? So we talked about ratios. And so what we're going to do now is talk about equal ratios. And equal ratios are these things called proportions. Here's a bunch of notes. Get ready. So equal ratios have another name. They are called proportions. It's handy to know. Good vocabulary. Now, how does it work? Here's an interesting uh, thing. We're going to consider the ratio of 12 to 18. We're going to consider the ratio of 12 to 18. Now, what's going to go on with 12 to 18? This is a ratio. But what we're going to do is increase it. We're going to play around with it. What if this ratio was found? Right? What if we discovered this ratio? By increasing a previous ratio's values by a scale factor of 2. If you remember scale factor, it just means that, that number that we multiply uh, to increase a thing or divide to decrease a thing. But anyway, what if we found 12 to 18 by increasing a previous ratio by a scale factor of 2? That means we multiplied both the values we were comparing by 2. Okay, so that means we can find the previous ratio by dividing both of these values by 2. So we look at, again, we're just considering the ratio 12 to 18. If we got to that ratio by increasing by a scale factor of 2, that means the previous ratio was 6 to 9. Okay, so hopefully we understood what the heck just happened. So if we increase a previous ratio by 2, we can find out what that previous ratio was by dividing the current ratio by 2, by the scale factor of 2. So both the numerator and denominator, both values are being divided by 2. We end up getting 6 to 9. Okay, We can do that. Uh, so what do we have here? We now have two equal ratios. We now have a proportion. This is a proportion, two equal ratios. Okay, 12 to 18 is, in fact, 6 to 9. Okay, so that is an equal ratio that is a proportion. Now, here's something interesting. Hopefully, you can see that 6 to 9 can be found by increasing a previous ratio's numbers by a scale factor of 3. Okay, so hopefully, you can see that we can have a previous ratio before this that was increased by a scale factor of 3. So we can find the previous ratio by dividing both of these values by 3. And we can do that. And when we'll have the, both the numerator and the denominator being divided by 3, we end up with 2 thirds. So now we have two more equal ratios. We have 6 to 9 being equal to 2 to 3. We have equal ratios. This is a proportion. Okay, so we have two proportions here. Okay, so two equal ratios is a proportion. In this case, we have two proportions. So that's how proportions work. So what do we have? We actually have three equal ratios. And this is totally legitimate. It's perfectly fine. It's just a thing. It's a fact of it's a fact of the universe. We have three equal ratios. 12 to 18 is equal to 6 to 9, which is equal to 2 to 3. Okay? Those are all equal. That's a that's a fact. Okay? So, do you remember simplifying fractions? It's the same thing as finding equal ratios, and that was establishing Proportions. So I want to make sure that we understand that what we're getting into is building on stuff we already know or have already mastered. That's going to be an important concept. So just in the, in the, in the likelihood that you get confused or lost, go back to remembering that we, we have done this before. We used to call it simplifying fractions. We were establishing proportions. Pretty neat, huh? Let's do some more stuff. So let's talk about equivalent proportions. All right, we're going to talk about one proportion and mess around with it big time. So let's investigate the previous proportion. Two-thirds is the same thing as six-ninths. All right, we're going to talk about that proportion. We know this to be true. This is a true statement. Right? That is a, those two things are equal, true. But watch how we can play around with these values. Two-thirds equaling 
6 ninths. What happens if we knock this like on its side and we end up with like 2 over 6? What, can, can we do that? Can we knock this on this side and end up with 2 over 6? Uh, yeah, but what else would we have? We'd have 3 over 9. So let's consider this for a second. If we knock this on the side to get 2 over 6, we would also have 3 over 9, right? Is this true? Yes, it is. Yes, indeed. 2 over 6 is indeed 3 over 9. Both of them are 1 third. In case this is a true statement, both of these are equal to 1, 1 over 3. So this proportion that we had... We can totally play around with it, and we would still have two equal ratios. So we can mess around with some of the things and see that, that if we knock it on its side, right, 3 over 9 and 2 over 6, that is an equal ratio as well. That is also a proportion. It's a true statement. Okay, now they're not the same values, of course. They're no longer two-thirds, but, but still, it's a neat, neat thing, you know. It's a thing that we can do. But what if we did this? Like, what if we flipped? One. Like, what if, what if we took two thirds over six ninths and then, like, totally flipped it? Would that be a true statement, right? That's the question. Would that be true? And the answer is yes. True statement. Three over two is indeed six over nine. Still equal ratios, okay? Still equal ratios, still a proportion, equivalent proportion, okay? So we can play around with that. That's just a neat thing. But wait, there's more. We can also add the denominator to each ratio. This is where stuff gets tricky, okay? So ch check this out. See our initial ratio. What if we added the denominator to each one? What if we added 3 to the numerator on the first, on the first ratio? Can we add 9 to the second ratio and have an equal proportion, right? Can we have equal ratios then? And the answer is yes. Check this out. So if we had our two-thirds, and we add the denominator, we'd get 5 over 3. And if we had 6 ninths, and we add the denominator, we'd get 15 over 9. So is 5 over 3 15 over 9? Yes, yes, indeed it is. Okay, so we can do that. We can play around with that proportion. In fact, you can play around with all your original proportion as long as you want, as long as it remains a true statement. Here's an example. Can we take our original proportion and say that, well, uh, 6 over 3 would be equal to 9 over 2? Is that a true statement? Uh, and the answer is no. So we can play around with proportions as long as we still have a true statement. So we couldn't say that 3 sixths is 2 ninths. That's not true. Okay, even though it kind of looks like maybe there's a possibility to do that, we can't. That's not a true statement, so we can't say that. We can play around with it as long as the proportion remains a true statement. Okay, so that's a huge thing to understand. Please make sure you do. All right, let's take a look at some examples of equivalent proportions at play. So here, here we have a, a book question. Uh, in the diagram, uh, we can see that x to 6 is equal to y to 7, and the question is what ratio completes the equivalent proportion x to y equals blank to blank? So if we have this diagram, we are establishing that x to 6, this, this ratio here is equal to y to 7, this ratio here, uh, uh, what, how can we complete an equivalent proportion? So what would x to y be? So you remember all the different things that we could do with the proportion. In, in establishing x to y, what we're doing is taking the original proportion and knocking it on its side, which is a thing that we can do, right? If you remember that, it's a thing that we can do. So x to y would be equivalent to 6 to 7, okay? So justify your answer, we just, I just did, right? In the previous example, this is justification of our, of our work. We can use this as an example, okay? If 2 thirds is 6 ninths, well, what would happen? Uh, if we knocked it on the side, 2, 6 equals 3, 9. So that's a true statement. So how do we justify that answer? We could justify it using the stuff that we've already proved. Okay, so it is totally 6, 7. Right? So we have the equivalent proportion example here. Now, what about in this uh, second example? Using the original proportion, x to 6 is y to 7, what ratio completes the equivalent proportion, 6 to x equals blank to blank? So we've got to figure what just happened from the original proportion 
to our new proportion, what just happened? Well, we, f we flipped it over. Okay, so if we're flipping over uh, x to 6, then, then we would have 7 to y as the equivalent proportion. Now, the question about justifying your answer is what we've done here. 2 thirds is equal to 6 ninths. So if I flip them over, uh, I'd have 3 halves equal to 9 sixths. That's a true statement. So you can completely justify your answer with some, with some truth. Right? So smack a, little, smack a little truth on it, and then we can have that. So that is how equivalent proportions work. Because you remember what a proportion is? Two equal ratios. And remember what we can do to play around with proportions. All this stuff is going to come in handy for the rest of the unit. But first, I'll have a third installment uh, for the lesson coming soon on proportions. I will see you on the flip side.